And this is a bilayer translation without using any membrane or any dia uh, dialysis membrane. This is what happens. We, we, you put the, the wheat, wheat germ uh, extract and you put the messenger RNA and form two layers. In the interfacial uh, zone, transition reaction takes place. So the byproduct is a constant pushed out of the reaction zone and the transition buffer and the reactant are constantly going into the interfacial area until the whole mix is uniform. So the, the, the transition continues. Just like any chemical reaction where you want to move the chemical reaction from left hand side to the right hand side, you constantly remove something like a byproduct, for example. And as you, as, you, as you see here, when we produce a GFP, uh, as time goes, uh, goes by, you see the GFP is being produced as, until the whole thing is uniform GFP solution. When you look at the whole extraction systems uh, available in your hand, and if you're looking at the small peptides, you may want to chemically synth uh, synthesize those peptides. But as the peptides get bigger, soon chemical synthesis is not the way to go. So you have to rely on the in vivo synthesis using cells like E. coli, bacterial virus, yeast, uh, Chinese hamster. And uh, the, 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 all these uh, in vivo systems have existed a long time and have contributed to the, to the, uh, the to, uh, to the biological, biomedical area. But they have one problem, especially the biggest problem is they have physiological restrictions. It's a living cell. They do not want to produce something it would harm them. Right? So they, they would not produce something toxic to cells. And of course, you always have to be mindful about the potential biohazard. So, so as a result, you look at the in vitro synthesis to, to, to remove yourself from these physiological restrictions. And currently, there are two major uh, in vitro synthesis methods, cell-free methods. One is a prokaryotic E. coli based cell-free system. And another, another one is a eukaryotic region cell-free system. This is what we produce. And uh, when you have this eukaryotic system, you have a very well controlled environment. You are not relying on the natural process to produce your proteins, fusion proteins. And there are very few physiological restrictions. There is absolutely no biohazard. And more importantly, there has been a very high success rate in producing well folded proteins of very high solubility, which is the characteristic of this uh, eukaryotic wheat germ cell free system. This is a conceptual picture of why that is so. When you look at a, a prokaryotic system, prokaryotic uh, the transition machinery is extremely efficient. They can produce 45 peptide bonds per second on average. So they can push out the protein very, very fast, but since its speed is so high, proteins do not have the time to fold by itself. So the folding takes place on a post-translational form. So it's a post-translational folding. On the other hand, if you use a eukaryotic system, protein, the speed of the peptide bond formation is much slower, as about a tenth, one tenth of it, of the prokaryotic system. That means it is slowly pushed out from hydrophobic environment to hydrophilic environment, and the protein naturally falls by itself. That, we believe, is, is what's happening in, in the uh, eukaryotic protein expression system. Uh, also, in the, uh, the, uh, the wheat germ system, to express multiple proteins together is very easy. All you have to do is put the different messenger RNAs, you produce different messenger RNAs, put them together, and co-express. So this is one example. So next, I'll show you some expression data. 
this is a, uh, the widget self expansion system using different type of uh, proteins, mammal, plant, fish, bacteria, virus, and others. And this is an expressed uh, uh, number of protein at, uh, versus tested samples. As you look here, most of them have expressed close to 100%, at least in the, in the, in the choice of the, of, the, of the protein selected for this experiment. So expression rate was very, very high. And this one was, uh, was the uh, excerpt from the uh, uh, paper in the current opinion in biotechnology 2006. And when you look at this, also this, this whole table uh, demonstrates the, not only the, the relatively high yield, but also the high solubility, as I explained before. And so far, close to 20,000 proteins have been expressed in the Wigium system. And uh, this 20,000 includes more than 1,300 human, uh, 30,000 human genes. And uh, so th th this is a genome-wide production uh, the, the, of the proteins. And when you look at this, you, you can see the, the model plant like Arabidopsis or human, human proteins, mouse, um, mouse protein, or the very hard to express malaria proteins. And currently, it's over 1,000 or 1,200 malaria proteins have been successfully expressed in the Wigium system, some viruses, and even prokaryotes. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the third party data. Uh, this, this work was done by the government, uh, governmental institute in Japan in 2001. It's called the Protein Factory Project, where in vitro system, we germ the E. coli, two different in vitro systems, and in vivo E. coli, insect cells, Chinese hamsters, all were compared. And these are the, 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 the name of the genes, and these are the different tags chosen to see how the tag would affect the expression and solubility. Green means this is all well expressed. Yellow means well expressed, but it's not as much as you want it to. Red means there's no expression. As you see here, in the WeGem system, most proteins were well expressed. If you use E. coli in vitro system, there are many genes which could not be expressed unless you maneuver with special tags. If you, if you, if you see whether E. coli in vivo and E. coli in vitro are different or not, again you see the similar trend. Then you have insect cell, Chinese hamster, not too bad, but compared to in which system, still there are certain proteins which could not be expressed in this system. The interesting thing is, when we visit our customers, customers say, in general, if you have tough time to express it in E. coli in vivo, probably it is difficult also, even if you use in vitro system, because translation machinery is the same. 